This video is about how to make vector data, and in particular vector point data, when we don't have a spatial object to start with. And that's because some data that is spatial doesn't come prepackaged as one of these spatial data types that we've been working with. And one common instance of that is spatial location data, typically points collected using a GPS, like many of us would collect in the field. Fortunately, the SF package lets us load that data, accounting for its spatial coordinates and turning it into a vector object of this simple feature type. So we'll go ahead and do this using the SF package like we have before. So we'll load that up using library. And let's look at an example of this where we take the plot data that we've been working with for Harvard Forest, but we'll work with it in a form that just starts as a table with latitudes and longitudes, which is often how this data would originally be collected. So it's not a shape file, it's just a CSV. And we can see that file by looking in data, uh, going into uh, Harv here, and we can see that in addition to the Harv plots shape files, we also have a Harv plots.csv. And if we click on view file, we'll see that this is just a regular CSV file. It's got the plot ID, the plot type, and then the longitude and the latitude. So our spatial data is in there, but we need to make it an actual spatial simple features object. To do that, we go ahead and read in this data using the same function we've been using to read in shape files, the stread function. And so uh, this will start looking like every other time we've loaded this data. We'll call it harv plots, and we'll assign it the output of stread, and then we'll give it the path to our CSV file in this case. So data slash harv slash harv underscore plots dot CSV. But now, in addition to this file, we need to give the SF package two more pieces of information so that it can properly convert this into spatial data. First, it needs to know what columns the X and Y coordinates are in. And we do that by passing it an optional argument called options. And options contains a vector with some strings in it that help communicate information to the uh, reading function. And in this case, we need the name of the X column and the name of the Y column. And that's formatted like this. So it's a vector. And in that vector, we're going to have two strings. The first string tells us where the X data is. And we get that by writing X underscore possible underscore names, and that's in all caps, and then the equals sign, and this is still inside those quotation marks, and then the column name where the X data is stored. And so in our case, that's longitude. We then want another string inside this vector that looks similar. It's going to be y underscore possible underscore names is equal to latitude. And so that tells stread where the latitude and longitude data are, where the x and y columns are. And then the last thing that stread needs to know is what transformation, what projection, what the coordinate reference system is for these data. And so uh, we say CRS is equal to, and in our case, this is latitudes and longitudes. That'll be pretty common. And so if that's the case, you can type in 4326, because that's that uh, code for uh, this 
lat long uh, projection or lack of projection. And that's it. We can hit enter. And if we click on Harv plots here, uh, we'll see that it looks like all of our other uh, simple features objects. We've got our columns that have information about each feature and then this separate geometry column uh, that we can see has stored the latitude and longitude in it uh, to tell are the spatial components of these data. And now having created an object like this, uh, we can then use it to make graphs like we have before, reproject the data, extract values from it, uh, and so on. And we can even, if we want, save this data as a shape file for later use, like we learned uh, in the last lesson. And so we could type ST right, uh, and then the Harv plots object, and then save it in uh, Harv plots new.shp. And if we did that back in our main project folder, uh, we'd see that we had now exported it as a shapefile. So that's the basic idea behind how to make uh, vector objects from spatial data for points. It's as straightforward as loading the data using the stread function, uh, pro but providing it with information on where the x and y data are stored using options and what the coordinate reference system for that data is. You know, sometimes it just is what it is. If y'all are struggling today, I'm struggling today too. That's okay. Just all trying to do our best here and keep moving forward.